Is the sun on my shot in my face too much? No, <laughs> no it is. You're a very handsome man, Hamish. <laughs> um, Hamish, we've just finished our really our first two day biodynamic prep making workshop, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. What's what are your what are your thoughts on on the future of of that sort of an event and? Well, my take um, has been for a long time now that we need to get the preparations, the preparation making more widely known. And so the objective in the next year or so is to have preparation making on farms around the country um, and build up a rhythmic, a rhythmic process of that. And what my, my real thinking is that when people come together to make the preparations together, that's when there's the the, the exchange of learning. Mm. You know, what e everyone's learned in the last six or 12 months from their agricultural practices, biodynamic and across the board. Because when people start um, reflecting on their observations, someone has an observation about birds, others about um, something in the soil, about the weather. But when we start to have these conversations together, that's really that really sort of um, inspires and fructifies. And as one of the participants said in this particular um, preparation making workshop, he said, you read all the stuff about the biodynamic preparations and it all sounds quite complicated and, and mm -hmm. strange, but he said, actually, when you turn up and actually do it, it's very simple. Mm. Yeah, there's nothing complicated about it. Mm. And while you're you know, stuffing chamomile into, into intestines or putting oak bark into a, a cow skull, etc. that's when the conversations happen yeah. around what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Mm. So that's the one, the social, the cultural social element. The social element is people coming together. The cultural element is the, the, the um, fostering of knowledge, the, the enthusing of people to learn more or to share more of what they have learned, which is then learning for someone else. Mm. Yeah, so it's sharing the learning. When it comes to the economic side, um, we need to remove the biodynamic preparation from the economic realm. And I say that as someone who's been part of putting them there, but that was for a particular purpose. Mm. Um, so the idea is that people come to these gatherings in spring and autumn, and those who participate then take home the preparations they need. Yeah. So. Yep. We all participate in the making of them and we all share in the use of them. Yeah, And those that are left over can be then sort of um, made available for sale for people who aren't participating in that level. Because there are some people who it doesn't work for them to be able to come to those things. So we need to make preparations available for them. But I would hope within sort of five years, preparation sales will actually dissipate. They'll, they'll disappear off the map pretty well because because people are, because people are participating in making, making them, yeah and that makes them more engaged with the whole process mm. now i understand not everyone's going to do that and we need to have the preparations available for everyone but i would hope within five years that's the culture that we've developed mm. yeah and so the idea of having these preparation making workshops all around the country on a regular basis so everyone knows it's Hannah Minow, you know, whatever week in March yep. and then another week in, in um, October there'll be a follow up yep. and once we get that established on the on the calendar like you know Christmas and Anzit Day and all these mm. other things it becomes mm. uh, easier for people to plan around. Well, it yeah. becomes part of the yearly ritual, isn't it? Yeah. As you were saying, it's like you shear in November or whatever, and yeah. you're doing this. Well, it's just oh, hang on, it's October. We're yeah. we're off to make the preps, or we're doing them ourselves, or something. Yeah, and it also encourages people to make not only to make them, but to then to use them. Yeah, yeah, because if you're just getting a packet through the post, it's a different level of engagement. Yeah, yeah, and the successful biodynamics farms are those where the the people actually engage in the process. Yeah, um, and so, and as I say, I'm not fast at what level. I'm. I see biodynamics as one one thread of the regenerative agriculture fabric. Yeah, mm. um, it has something particular to offer, and that's that's where again in the preparation making workshops we can talk more about the planetary, the constellation connections, the the non visible aspects of of agriculture, not just 
the weighing and measuring of the outcome of agriculture, so mm. to speak. Yeah, of, but actually, what what preparations are needed for plants to actually um, manifest and animals and, and that sort of thing. So that's my hope in the in the next five years, and I think I think we can we can um, we can achieve that. So just to sort of clarify, um, at least here at Hanamino and as you said at other you know, um, locations that, that um, uh, with, with hosts that have either hosted or will host um, workshops, we'll have our spring and autumn um, uh, gatherings, prep making gatherings. And also I was thinking today, you know, having our introduction to biodynamics twice a year, a month before those prep making. So if you're yeah. thinking about getting on board, we'll, we'll do another one in sort of early, early spring in time for then, if you want to then go on to do the prep making course, or workshop, then you've got time to sort of then get home a month's worth of, you know, practice or at least thinking and then here's some prep making. Uh, and the other thing that we actually have started here at Hanamino and I haven't followed up on, but um, last year we had also a day on projective geometry mm. to, to bring to these, these events um, cultural things to broaden broaden people's experience and interest mm. and be become that these biodynamic farms become cultural centers yeah you know projective geometry we can have eurythmy we can have um storytelling um all sorts of you know um Goethean scientific st studies and things like that so we can actually s just take a day out to um look at look at the deeper issues of what is involved in being a human being involved mm. in agriculture mm. yeah because um just the projective geometry you start to see the geometry in in plants and life it's fascinating and, and very differently yeah. yeah and it expands one's observational capacities and that's what farmers need to do and we're also um as part of another stream working to bring indigenous knowledge and culture to to non-indigenous people yep. but the in their context yep. yeah so so it's a very delicate process but it's very important not only for a healing of everything that's happened mm. over the last 200 years on all sorts of levels but going forward we're going to need each other yep. so to me going forward it's a matter of how do we actually all co-work collaborate from our different streams and that's mm. why i say biodynamics is just one thread of the fabric yeah you know, and then within the regenerative agriculture there is there are many threads yep yeah you know, the diversity and the the indigenous thread is going to be a very important one also um so you know we're working on that too well as i you know like to say that the regenerative agriculture has a is a is a toolbox of sorts and then the tools we use you know it's our choice and biodynamics is one tool that we can we can choose to have in there and pull out when we need it. And my, my view is actually that biodynamics is a wonderful overlay, like it brings the colour to the toolbox and it brings a sort of some structure to the toolbox because every other tool that I know of in regenerative ag agriculture can incorporate biodynamics. Absolutely, and yeah. and that's my take too that you know, <clears throat> biodynamics you can add to whatever you're doing. And, totally. and even I have to say chemical agriculture. You know, I've seen people who a very high-tech chemical agriculture. They sort of um, want to change, but, but you know, the circumstances make it very difficult mm. for them to go cold turkey, so to speak. So I say, just add the preparations to what you're doing and then step yourself into your future at a pace that you can do it. So um, even for people who are highly geared and highly chemical, add the preparations and you'll see, you'll get a benefit. Mm. Yeah? Um, that's great. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a quick span. We've just come to one of our, my, our family's favourite picnic spots here at Hannah Minnow. Looking back over there, there's the shearing shed and the homestead's back over that hill. It's such a beautiful spot here. And uh, we've had a really, um, really interesting couple of days. If you are watching this um, and you're not on YouTube, then go to YouTube and try and find it there. There's heaps of other ones there. Hamish and David Marsh and Terry McCosker and heaps of other wonderful um, regenerative agriculture practitioners and educators and farmers. Um, so go to, uh, just Google Charlie Arnott YouTube, it's there. We've also got a, um, a Facebook page, haven't we? Yes. And it's, I think it's like 
Biodynamics inspired by Hamish and Charlie or something. Yeah. It's a yeah. it's a great page. Um, wonderful people doing exchanging ideas and and, and experiences there. What else? Great. Yeah. What about your website, Hamish? Um, we'll be working it, on that tomorrow. We're working on that tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, and also, if you're not on Instagram and you're watching this on something else, well, we're on Instagram. So get busy. And that was a l l wonderful couple of days. It as, 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 as the sun goes down. As always, wonderful people. Oh yeah, fantastic yeah. people yeah. from. Um, and we had a great one at Glen, uh, at Glenmore House on Saturday, only a couple of days ago too. Yeah, it? Near urban near and Camden. Farmers. That yeah. was that was uh, that was amazing. People, I was amazed. People from Victoria and all over the countryside yeah. for that one. That was a really that, great. And, and a yeah, good 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 variety of people there. Um, and we squeezed it into one day somehow. <laughs> Thanks, Hamish. Great, ciao. Thanks, Charlie.